Hi, Nils Johnson Laird here. So, the Ender 3, the hot end heater block. To screw or not to screw? That is the question. No, seriously, that's the question that's been bouncing around on Creality's official Ender 3 3D printer group on Facebook. Originally, I was gonna do this video in response to Nick Pellegrin's video and the subsequent conversation I had with him and Luke Hatfield. Luke Hatfield, Guy has done the troubleshooting guide, 50 plus pages of very useful information. Thank you for volunteering your time and doing this. So, I was talking with Luke and Nick and said, you know, I need some empirical data on this. So I said, hey, I'll take my thermocouple, thermometer, and actually measure this heat sink and the back of the heater block and the nozzle, just try to get some data here. Now, I've seen Chuck Hellebuck's video where he's done the same kind of thing, using a thermocouple, putting it at the front, with the screws, without the screws, without the fan. So I've done something a little bit different, so let me get on with that, and I'll tell you what I did and what I got. Before I get uh, started going over what I measured and the results I got, I just wanted to run over some basics. I, I appreciate most people know this, but I just wanted to clear things up in case anybody didn't. This is the terminology I'm gonna be using when I talk about what I measured. Starting at the top, we've got our Bowden connector, also called the push to connect. For the Ender 3, the stock hot end has a PC4-M10. Item of trivia, the PC actually stands for pneumatic connector. We actually use them a lot in the uh, semiconductor industry and other industries use it for pneumatic solenoid valves and so just so you know pc pneumatic connector we have our aluminium alloy or aluminum if you prefer heat sink slotted into that we have the throat some people call it the heat break i'm going to call it the throat because there's nothing's called heat or have the word heat in them we then have our heater block here you can see the uh, heater cartridge element sticking out here grub screw to hold hold it in on the far side we'll actually have the thermistor which measures the temperature of the heater block. And this is actually upside down. So the nozzle will screw in here. On the standard hot end, we've got an MK8 with an M6 screw. And then we have the securing screws that go through here and screw into the heat sink. These are the items that this is all about. Uh, one item to note is the securing screws actually screw into the heat sink closer to the back of the heat sink than the front. The grub screw here is the front where the cooling fan is blasting air to cool the whole thing down. Okay, got that out of the way. Okay, heat creep. What is heat creep? My understanding of heat creep is excess heat is making its way up into the throat into this PTF tube and the filament inside. Trying to measure the temperature was a little bit tricky because I was trying to keep the probe square to the back of the heat sink and the throat and make sure it wasn't getting cooled down by the fan. And the other problem was the thermocouple takes like two minutes to reach maximum temperature. Fortunately, my thermometer records the maximum temperature, so, but I was still having to hold, hand hold the thermocouple until it reached the maximum temperature, which is kind of tricky. If you plan to do this yourself, I suggest you get a thermocouple that has a nice stiff cable so you're not having to, because you don't want your hands physically touching this, obviously, because you're going to burn yourself. So, what readings did I get? Well, at 185 degrees Celsius for the nozzle, the back here on the heat sink was giving me 32 degrees. That's actually the same reading that Chuck was getting when he was measuring the front. And as you can see, we work our way around behind the throat, it was 29.5, so it's a few degrees cooler than the edge. You start going here, the top of the throat is 41 degrees. The bottom is 99. The nozzle itself was 103. The side of the heat heater block behind the thermistor was 131 
and the bottom of the securing screw was 93.8 and the top was 46.1. Now if you're looking at these values feel free to pause the video and look at them. As you see I increase the nozzle temperature and the temp temperatures do start going up. Now the argument is that the, these securing screws are allowing heat to creep in to the heat sink through the throat, through the PTFE, into the filament. Now the problem I have with that argument based on actually measuring the surface temperatures is for that to be true, at 185 degrees, the top of this screw on the outside surface is 46 degrees Celsius. That means its core temperature would have to be over 70 degrees Celsius, right? Because how else can you get the filament inside close to its glass transition temperature? Now, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just asking the question, how is, how is it possible? Because this is an M3 screw. I'm measuring its surface temperature. That means its core, which is less than 1.5 millimeters away, is over 70 degrees Celsius. I don't know how that's possible. Now, I also plotted all of this temperature readings into a chart, like so. Now, the only reading I'm suspect about is this guy, which is the bottom of the throat. Uh, except I, I messed up because it should be up here, I think. But generally, I'm looking at this and going, you know, the temperatures are tracking. They are increasing as I set the nozzle temperature higher. But down here, the bottom of the heat sink, above the screw, above the throat, are still staying below 40 degrees Celsius. And as I said, glass transition temperature for PLA, 70 degrees up here. So we ha are saying for the th those screws to be causing heat creep, the core temperature of them has to be over 70 degrees Celsius. How else are we getting that energy into the filament? Now, is the point of this video for me to beat people over the head with it and say, see, you're wrong? No. I do 3D printing as a hobby. I want it to be fun. I want it to be fun for you guys too. So I'm asking for your help. The whole point of the Facebook group that Creality has set up is for us to help each other. I see people coming on saying, hey, I've got this problem. I'm kind of new to this. I don't quite understand what's going on. Several people chip in and help solve the problem. So that's what I'm asking. Now, this is where the challenge comes in because I'm gonna be asking a lot because to try and solve this problem, we need to be able to repeat it. So I have heat creep, the challenge. This is what I'm asking for. Tell me what type of filament you're using, what brand and color of filament, because maybe the color pigment has something to do with it. Are you using the original stock Ender 3 or a modification of it? Describe, show me pictures while you've modified. Because I want to try and set my Ender 3 up. If you've got massives of you know, ducks and new fans and stuff like that, that's probably going to be a bit too much. But if you're as close to the original Ender 3, that would really help. Share the G code file of the print that failed. Now, this is where it, I'm going to be a bit picky. If you've had a model like six months ago that failed and you go, oh yeah, let me just re-slice that with my slicer. No, because you've probably tweaked your settings. The software's probably been updated. I need the original G code file that fails because otherwise I can't reproduce it. And if you have to re-slice it, print that G code again, see if it fails on your printer. If it does, great. I will try and print it. Next requirement, the print job itself. Can we keep it under four hours? I really do not want to have to do a 20 hour print and wait for 19 hours to see if it fails. Plus, I never leave my 3D printers running overnight. Yes, I know there's thermal protection. There could be pixies that come out and sprinkle safety dust all over it. I don't care. You know, my workshop's attached to my house. I'm not risking my family and my home for any accidents. So under four hours, please.
can you send me pictures or share pictures on the Facebook page or video on YouTube showing your print failing? Now I know a lot of people are using cameras and Octoprint to monitor their prints. If you've got a print job that failed and you think it's because of heat creep or you know clogging, whether the extruder started clicking and then suddenly you're, the Ender 3 is air printing, great, share that information. Also share the point in the video and the time it took for the extruder to start clicking and when it's clogged the nozzle and stopped printing. Additional information. What was the room temperature at the time, if you know? What's the humidity in your room? Are you printing your, with an Ender 3 in a drafty workshop or is it an air-conditioned room? All of this information will help. I know I'm asking a lot, but I'm committed to trying to help you and everybody else in this group to resolve this problem because before we can actually solve it, we have to be able to repeat the failure. And just to show how committed I am, that's my 30 bucks to buy whatever filament I need to get off amazon.com to reproduce this failure because reproducing the failure is more important them saying to someone, you're wrong. I want to be able to reproduce the failure because then we can start analyzing why it's going wrong and then we can come up with a solution. So when people come on onto the group and say, hey, my extruder's clicking, it then clogs and I'm air printing, we can go, hey, we've studied this. We think we know what's going on. Here's a solution. I do not want to hear anecdotes, baseless opinions, guesses, Sorry to go Jerry Maguire here, but show me the evidence. I want to see evidence I can reproduce on my own printer. Then we can start studying this. Okay, if you've been watching this video this far, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll post this on YouTube, post a link on the, like I said, Creality's official Ender 3 3D printer group on Facebook. I want your help. I want to hear from you what prints have failed, and you share the information with me so I can try and reproduce it on my Ender 3. Okay, thanks.